I have heard your cries, and we are going to listen to Diana Ankodinova. Hey friends, it's Serene. I'm so glad to welcome you back to my channel, my little space on the internet. If you are one of our new subscribers, welcome. You have picked the right channel to subscribe to. And if you haven't yet, subscribe below. What are you waiting for? If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hate this video, give it a thumbs up. You can disagree with me, it's totally fine. We can still be friends. Let me know what you think in the comments of what I think of this song. Those comments that are rude and unkind, you know, nobody's got time for that. So, I'm thrilled to be listening to a highly requested, highly, when I say highly, I mean like, so highly requested video today of Wicked Game, I know. Now this video was um, posted anyway back in May of 2019 and you're like, oh my gosh, that was so last year, but guess what? Last year was 2020. I know it's crazy, we're in 2021. It doesn't really seem like it some days because I feel like we're stuck sometimes. It's like, no, it has kept going which is fine. All right, let's get into it. I'm so excited, let's get to it. Diana, here we go. The world was on fire and no one could save me but you. It's strange what is a interesting so far. Okay, somebody like you on that last bit. It oh, it's she changed her vowel so much on those last two little phrases. Let's go back to uh where she comes in. Let's go back. And we're just going to try to analyze this as we go, okay? The world was on fire. No one could save me. Okay, so that first little bit, um, besides the fact that she has this gorgeous accompaniment behind her, anyway, but she comes in with this whisper voice, which really is very storytelling. Um, I know sometimes when I tell students, come in with this very like a lot of breath or a whisper, it's very foreign to a lot of people. And it's like, wait, how do I actually do that? I'm supposed to be singing. But Diana did this quite beautifully, quite beautifully. And then when she actually took the melody from a whisper into notes, it was this beautiful, gorgeous, low, round, full tone in the, her lower voice that was just like, uh, yes. Yes, you just want to subscribe all day to that. And then she did it again. She came on that second phrase. She came in with that whisper. The world was on fire. And it's like um, whisper singing into that, oh no, that low, beautiful note. And, uh, oh, mm -hmm, I like it. changing timbres here with her voice now. I never dreamed she comes in nice and strong and a very a mixed voice. And then on somebody like you, she really opened it up like inside the back of her mouth to make this very different kind of tone. So she took kind of two opposites and smushed them together, which was really audially interesting. We'll go with that. She did it again. On somebody, somebody like you. Very nice. And that is like a very dropped larynx, right? Dropped higher larynx, dropped larynx. She's making that transition really nicely. And then her vowels within her mouth get very open and round. Oh my goodness. 
on that one line that she repeats twice, uh, and I don't want to fall in love. Is that what she said? Maybe. In that, and I don't want to fall in love line, I'm, I'm hearing four different types of voices or techniques that I'm hearing within this one line. I'll go back and we'll label them, shall we? So she starts with a nice, no, very chesty. Then she flips up into this very beautiful frontal placement of her head voice. And she did a way better flip than I did right then, but right there. Flip. So chesty flipping up into this beautiful headspace and then going into this very open -y, like it's like open vowel but like in the back but a very swallowed placement but it doesn't sound swallowed it's just very open back there like the soft palate's probably very lifted right what we did to break, to make me feel this way Okay, we have to go back to that section because that section, that section, did you hear that section? I'm sure you heard that section. You're like, yeah, and you haven't heard that section. So keep listening. Yes, but I need to hear that section again, okay? What wicked game to play. Ah, so she really brought in that very dropped larynx, lots of vowel space, but she didn't stay there the whole time because she still had some vocal agility happening. <gasps> so normally, like when we take a voice into that space, the agility kind of gets lost in that low place and that very open place, but she's able to switch so quickly that she still does have that agility. What we did to play low. To make me uh, coming up a little. Very head voice and in the front space. But right before that, on say, it's like she had this crazy mix of this dropped larynx, open space sound, and it was like it was mixed with this very frontal sound. I have no idea how she's doing this. It's so fascinating. Listen to say. She still had some good agility there on two, two. Let's just hear that one more time. Ah, wow. And then she comes back to this super ethereal voice that's very, just this beautiful floaty head voice. Okay. She whispers at the end. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. There was so much that happened within her voice, within this one song, that I'm just sitting here going, that was like 
ridiculously magical. The whole stage presence, her whole costume, I'm like, this feels almost kind of Lord of the Rings-ish, but not because it doesn't have, because it has a lot more depth than just the really floaty voice they have through Lord of the Rings, but like, Oh, it gave me chills. It felt so magical. I really, oh my goodness, super fun. The way that she can transition through her voice so quickly and seamlessly from this very low open space and her, her range obviously is totally a thing, but then she also has the strength in her upper voice as well. Very often when I have a voice that I'm working with that has a very developed lower part of their voice, Often I also see when they come up through their passaggio into their head voice, they have a hard time transitioning out of that beautiful low chesty voice into this more raised larynx frontal placement of the voice that is what makes the higher notes able to have agility and movement. Because if you try to, you know, sing with your larynx down here like this, and sing with that placement, that musculature placement, up into a place that's like, hey, I'm here today. It would be very like, hey, I'm today. It would be too heavy. And the placement of the voice box would be too low and you need to raise it so that you can go into this head place space. But ah, when a singer can sing, into that beautiful lower part of their voice to the mid part of their voice, going up into that very nice, light, ethereal, that has lots of agility and flexibility within their voice. Oh, it's so fun to listen to. So thank you, my subscribers, for recommending this song. This was a great listen. And I just really love to listen to amazing and beautiful music, whether it comes from my side of the world or the other side of the world, it doesn't matter. I love listening to good music. So thank you for your recommendations. And I look forward to hearing from y'all in the comments about this incredible singer. As always, give this video a thumbs up subscribe below. Even if you didn't like my reaction, well, suck it. You know what I'm saying? Talk to you next time and have an amazing, amazing time listening to this again. Cause I'm, I'm guessing you're going to listen to it like five more times plus now, just because you're like, say what? All right. Talk to you soon. Peace. Class two.